Hello everyone, today we will be doing questions 17 through 23 of the Digital SAT Practice Test 1, Math Section Module 1. So starting with question 17, a neighborhood consists of a 2 hectare park and a 35 hectare residential area. The total number of trees in the neighborhood is 3,934. The equation 2x plus 35y equals 3,934 represents this situation. Which of the following is the best interpretation of x in this context? So first, let's see what we're asking. We want the best interpretation of x, which just means that we want the meaning of x from this equation. So let's break down this equation. We have 2x plus 35y equals 3,934. And this is the total number of trees in the neighborhood. So if we have total number of trees, then we can also see that each of these represents a number of trees and we're adding the two together to get the total number of trees. So let's also correspond the numbers we have. So if we have a two hectare park and a 35 hectare residential area, then we can see that the two is gonna to relate to the number of trees in the park and 35 represents the number of trees in the residential area. So we only wanna look at the term that has an X in it because we're only focusing on the meaning of X. And we have that 2x will be the number of trees in the park, because we remember that 2 relates to the park. So if 2x represents the number of trees in the park and we just want the number of x, that's the number of trees in the park per hectare, because we remember that this was for two hectares, but we only want x, so that's just number of trees in the park per hectare. And we can see that that's exactly what option A says. Okay, moving on to question 18. We have the graph shows the relationship between the number of shares of stock from company A, X, and the number of shares of stock from company B, Y, that Simone can purchase. Which equation could represent this relationship? So we don't wanna to worry too much on this wordy part that they gave us because they gave us a graph here and we can get all of our information from it. So first let's focus on something easy to identify, the X and Y intercepts. So the X intercept, which means that Y is equal to zero, is 60 comma zero. And we also have our Y intercept up here, which is when X is equal to zero. So that's zero comma 40. So we can look at our different answer choices and see if there are any we can eliminate that don't contain these points. So let's use the point x equals 0, y equals 40 first, because that's easier to plug in x equals 0. So if x equals 0, then 8x is equal to 0. And then you add 12, so y would equal 12. But that's not right, because we want y to equal 40. So plugging in x is 0 here, we have 8 times 0, which is 0, plus 12y equals 480, which would mean y equals 40. So we'll keep that one for now. Moving on to option C, we have that y equals 12 times zero is zero plus eight, y equals eight, so that's not the correct answer choice. And then finally, 12 times zero is zero plus eight y equals 480. So that means y equals 60. However, we want y equals 40, so this is not the right option. Just That just leaves us with option B, which is the correct answer. Moving on to question 19, circle A has a radius of 3n and circle B has a radius of 129n, where n is a positive constant. The area of circle B is how many times the area of circle A? So first, let's find expressions for the area of circle B and the area of circle A, and then we'll see if anything cancels out. So the area of circle B, well, we know that area is equal to pi times the radius squared. So the area of circle B will be pi times, in this case, the radius is 129n squared. So let's just leave that as it is for now. And now let's calculate the area of circle A. So that's pi times 3n, because that's our radius squared. And we want to find out how much larger the area of B is than the area of circle A. So that means we're dividing them. So we notice that our pi's cancel out, 
And we can also distribute the squared. So in this case, it'll be 129 squared n squared divided by, and we do the same thing to the denominator, uh, 3 squared over n squared. So we can cancel out the n squared. So that'll just leave us with 129 squared divided by 3 squared. However, we can simplify this to 129 divided by 3, and the whole thing is squared. So 129 divided by 3, well, we know that 12 divided by 3 is 4, and then 9 divided by 3 is 3. So that's 43 squared. And then out of the answer choices here, uh, we can see that the answer is option D because 43 squared is a pretty big number. If you think about 40 squared, that would be 1,600, and it has to be even larger than that. So clearly, all of the other options, A, B, and C, are wrong, leaving us with answer choice D. Moving on to question 20. The frequency table summarizes the 57 data values in a data set. What is the maximum data value in the data set? So we're just looking for the maximum, which means that out of our data values here, we just want to see the largest one. So in this case, that's data value of 14. Moving on to question 21. A circle in the xy plane has a diameter with endpoints 2, 4, and 2, 14. An equation of this circle is x minus 2 whole squared plus y minus 9 whole squared equals r squared, where r is a positive constant. What is the value of r? So we can draw this out so that we have a better understanding of what we're given. So we have the diameter is endpoints 2, 4, and then we'll extend that. We'll say that that's x equals 2, and that's y equals 4, and y equals 14. In this case, it might not really be drawn to scale. And so if that was our circle, and that's the diameter, I know this isn't a perfect drawing, then we know that this distance between 4 and 14 is 10, and we know that our diameter is just equal to 2r. So if we know that 2r equals 10, then we have that our radius is equal to 5, and it's just asking for the value of r. So the answer is 5. Moving on to question 22. The measure of angle r is 2 pi divided by 3 radians. And the measure of angle T is 5 pi divided by 12 radians, greater than the measure of angle R. What is the measure of angle T in degrees? So first, let's just focus on the measure of angle T in radians. And then we want to make sure to remember to convert it to degrees. So if we have that, the measure of angle T is 5 pi over 12 greater than the measure of angle r. That means that we can just add 5 pi over 12 to our value for r, which in this case we're given is 2 pi over 3. So this means that we have to create a common denominator. So if you multiply by 4 fourths, which is equal to 1, you get that 2 pi times 4 is 8 pi. And then 3 times 4 for our denominator is 12. So now we're adding 5 pi over 12 plus 8 pi over 12, and that gets us 13 pi over 12. And then we also want to convert this to degrees. So 13 pi over 12, and then an easy way to convert radians into degrees is by multiplying by 180 divided by pi, because there are 180 degrees in pi radians. So then the pi's cancel out, and you can see that either this is a little bit greater than 180 because 13 twelfths is slightly greater than 1. And we know that 13 twelfths is also much less than 2. And this would be greater than 2 times 180. So we can see that the answer is uh, option C. But if you wanted, you could also divide 180 divided by 12 and then multiply that by 13. But in this case, we know that because 13 twelfths is slightly greater than 1, will have a little bit more than 180, which in this case, the only option close to 180 and a little bit more is C, 195. Moving on to question 23. 
A certain town has an area of 4.36 square miles. What is the area in square yards of this town? So if we think about it, we know that we're given the conversion here. One mile is equal to 1,760 yards. So if we want to find one square mile, that's one mile times one mile is equal to one square mile. Well, if we convert one mile to 1,760 yards, and then the other mile is 1,760 yards, that'll get us yards squared, square yards. And this is also equal to one square mile. So in this case, if we multiply 1,760 times 1,760, which you can do on your calculator, you get that one square mile is equal to 3, okay, I'm going to have to write it down here because it's a pretty big number. Three million ninety seven thousand six hundred. So if that's equal to one square mile and we have four point three six square miles, then we can multiply both sides by four point three six. So four point three six square miles is equal to thirteen million five hundred five thousand five hundred thirty six square yards. And that is answer choice D. So in this case, I used a calculator just to show you that it is the exact value. But you could also estimate it by seeing that maybe one thousand seven hundred sixty is close to two thousand, which is much easier to work with. So if you had two thousand squared, that would be, well, two squared is four, and then you have six zeros. And then if you multiply that by uh, four, because four is approximately 4.36, then you would get four times four is 16, followed by six zeros. And that's closest to answer choice D, which isn't really close to any of the other ones. So if you liked the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe.